actor audience relationship. I think that's something that I'd like to talk about because um, I think it's quite obviously there's a huge shift in that in the beginning of the second age. But I want to ask you a question: When you're singing, uh, I could be in the Follies, da 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 da, mm -hmm. and when you're doing finishing the half, da da da, who are you talking to? Fourth wall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is there a fourth yeah. wall in there? I'm just, you know, this is something worth talking about in terms of the actor audience relationship that you need to perhaps analyse and evaluate and what what what's happening there stylistically. And so you are talking to a fourth wall. Yeah. I mean, it's, it depends on on production. You always have the choice in a soliloquy situation to to actually interact with everybody that is in in the auditorium mm -hmm. if you want and use them as a soundboard, or you are just reflecting in your own head. Um, yep. for, for us, it's I'm, I take in, do not take in the audience at all okay. in that. The only time we, we do in the second act, which I really enjoy, is that when lecture. we're doing a lecture. Yeah. Um, we're doing a PowerPoint presentation, essentially, and the lights are up and, and they're there and you do your, your part of the show, you mm. know, which is great. And then later on in that act, when I have a similar reflective song, again, it's just you, you're following your own thought process. Yeah. So. You're letting them into your world through... Cool. Yeah. To be honest, yeah. yeah. And is that Stuart as a director yeah. that deliberate setting up of of the audiences enrolled as <coughs> being at the lecture itself? Is that that's not in the original production? Is that something not you've... It's not quite as bad as it is okay. in ours. <laughs> oh, not quite as How well. Dare. Dare. Uh, <laughs> no, she's off stage. She's getting changed. No, it's not quite as. Um, I mean, that we we bring the house lights up. We include everybody as if it's been a mistake, and they certainly didn't do that in the original. But, sure. but no, I think it's 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 understood in the mm -hmm. in the writing mm -hmm. that that's there. I mean, I, the thing I love about Broadway theatre is that it is so it is so heart on the sleeve emotions in this moment that when he sings um, finishing the hat or when she sings the Follies moments, mm -hmm. I mean, it's absolutely taking us in, even though the fourth wall is mm -hmm. there, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a really, and so that they're absolutely connecting with with all of us mm -hmm. at that moment, uh, I think. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there, there's a nudge, nudge, wink, wink element um, at various times for me, particularly the dogs moment yeah. of going, <laughs> What the hell am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> which is really? which is in the writing. <laughs> which, as well. which is which is evident in the fact that it's a musical number. I mean, it's 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 a very specific type of number. Yeah. It's in there for so for some fun to you know tour de force, as the Stewart's yeah. called it. You know, Mandy Patinkin was was very very clever, and it's it's letting letting the audience in on the joke. You know? It is, uh, but you know, you try and look at the structure of the piece and to try and find a reason why he suddenly starts to talk about the dog when he's just found out that Dot and Louie are together, and mm -hmm. we've had that ridiculous line where Louie offers her the cream puffs, uh, suddenly to go into the dog is a really hard transition, unless it's the way George is, which is, I'm now talking about that, and now I'm talking about that, and I'm mm. thinking about And you that's why I think you have to get inside his, his head. I had a major problem with how broad to draw people like Mr and Mrs or like the Celestes, yeah. the two girls, yeah. and if you're there in absolute operetta land, uh, and it's it's like they've just stepped out of Fledermouse or something, that they and but it is in the way it's written, and again they're not real characters. They're called Celeste One and Celeste Two, for example. He's called the Boatman. None of them have names. Franz and Yvonne are probably the more more interesting of all of those characters, and they operate almost on two levels. They operate with these two in a very real level in that gorgeous scene where they go to see the painting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in Act One and, and there's a connection between Chrissy and, and Yvonne, or well, what's her name, Antoinette, at that, at that moment. Um, but they also operate in the land of caricature as well. So he can then have a very broad <laughs> scene with Frida immediately afterwards. And it's, um, that, that has been a fascinating journey, I think, to try and look at the, the way the piece fits together. Yeah. And it's, it's, it is all to do with the fourth wall and how broad you're playing and how real it is. And yeah.